My name is Carlos Sanchez, and I'm going to talk to you about continuous integration, continuous delivery, all those cool things that you can do with containers. So uh, a little bit about me. Um, I'm an engineer at CloudBees. I work at scaling the Jenkins platform. I wrote the, well, I started the, uh, uh, the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin um, over three years ago, more or less when Kubernetes was still not very popular. And I am a big open source contributor at different foundations, big time Apache, Apache Maven, and the Clis Foundation, and now Docker Images, Puppet, you, you name it. And I'm also part of the Google Development Experts Program with the work um, I'm doing with, with Kubernetes. And, and so, so before we start, okay, who is using Kubernetes? I'm not gonna ask who knows what Kubernetes is, but. <laughs> okay, keep, keep your hands up. Who's using it in production? Okay, all right. Right on. Who, who's still sleeping at night? <laughs> um, okay, and who's using Jenkins? Jesus. Uh, who's using Jenkins with Kubernetes? I'm, I'm, I can just stop and leave and, and it's perfect. It's the perfect audience. So if, if I don't talk about something you expected me to talk, please grab me later. I'll be around uh, the whole week. I'll be at the booth, uh, CloudBeast booth uh, downstairs. So if you find uh, you need to talk to somebody about something, especially Kubernetes and Jenkins, you can, you can find me around. That's why, why I'm here. I also have a call since yesterday. So uh, this is not my normal voice, I think. I cannot hear it myself very clearly, but all right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we did and how we learned from this experience and uh, covering a, a little bit of what we do at CloudBees and also the, the open source stuff. So I'll be very clear about, well, I hope to be very clear about what's commercial, what's not uh, open source, what's open source. So. Our, our main goal a few years ago when I joined CloudBeats was to scale Jenkins, so traditional application and uh, using containers. So uh, one of the reasons is like, well, everything, everybody that came to, to me or to us asking, well, I, we want to run CI CD in containers, right? Well, because why, why not? Um, so that's like Docker, the golden hammer for everything. So basically, we wanted to run isolated Jenkins masters and agents and enforce like memory CPU limits so to make sure that people don't abuse the system and run it at big scale. So obviously, this is not trivial. That's, that's how they move containers around in some place in the Caribbean until few, some years ago. <laughs> and sometimes it, what we do uh, so resembles that. But um, so there's two ways to scale Jenkins. You can have more agents per master, or you can have more masters with their own agents. So uh, the solution about having more agents, that's, uh, there's plenty of plugins that you can use to dynamically scale, uh, create agents on demand. Uh, it started years ago with the EC2 plugin, where you could just start VMs. Obviously, today with containers, you can just start containers, which is a lot faster if that works for you. And the problem is like master is still a single point of failure. Um, in Jenkins, you can uh, have different versions of plugins, different configurations. So it's not really always useful to have one big master for everybody. Especially if you have multiple teams working on different things like mobile, Java, JavaScript, whatever. There's a limit on how many agents you can attach, but I mean, that's, that limit goes every time it goes higher and higher. And the other solution is that you can have more masters where you can have different teams, different sub-organizations using the same, uh, using different masters. So it's like a uh, sharding model where you can have, yeah, these, uh, these guys that develop Java applications have their master with their own plugins and their own agents and these guys that develop something else have, have a, a different master. The problem is like you lose like single sign-on uh, or you lose the centralized operation and configuration of your cluster. So what we built uh, back in, 
in the last two years was Cloudbase Jenkins Enterprise that had the best of both worlds uh, using one thing that is called the Operations Center where you can manage multiple masters. And then you have dynamic creation in each master using whatever one of these plugins that you can, that you can use find in the open source community. So the first implementation for historical reasons only was using Mesos, and we use uh, Marathon, Terraform, Packer, all these cool technologies. And just recently was announced that we are launching this on Kubernetes. So Jenkins and Kubernetes. We can run both the, Jenkins, the masters and the agents on Kubernetes. And the interesting part is, uh, especially for the masters, is the storage, how you handle uh, the storage of the masters, because they just use a file system location to store files and uh, outputs, logs, and configuration, and so on. And agents typically don't need this storage. So storage is one of the typical problems that people face using, uh, well, Kubernetes or a distributed cluster uh, container. And we use persistent volume claims, so you can plug your own implementation or your persistent volumes using whatever backend you want. So that's a cool thing. Uh, the problems, I, and I just added this quote from, from one of the engineers, like, Jenkins has like the worst case scenario for uh, network based storage because it, it has a lot of writes and the small files and many files and so on. So when people try to run Jenkins in like EFS or, or an NFS that has, does not have a performant uh, server on the backend, they have all these issues, performance issues. And also one thing that we had with Mesos, because we built it, and we don't have today on Kubernetes yet, is uh, the multi-availability song storage with, with EBS. Because Kubernetes doesn't yet uh, provide. The other important part of running Jenkins at the scale uh, is the networking. You gotta know that there's like the two ports that Jenkins uses, the HTTP and the JNLP agent, where the agents connect to. So HTTP is typically web UI APIs. The NLP is just to connect the agents. And we use Nginx, uh, the ingress controller, and we use ingress rules like the, in Kubernetes. So basically, we can have uh, multiple uh, clusters running at the same time, just using different host names. And we use path-based routing to go into the operation center or go to, into any of the masters you run. <coughs> And for JNLP, uh, so we have the agents that start dynamically and using the Kubernetes plugin. And you can also attach agents manually because let's say you want to have a Windows box uh, attached, a Windows agent, or you ha want to have like a specialized machine that has something that you cannot containerize or you cannot run on the cloud. So we, for that, we expose these ports using node port in Kubernetes. So it allows you to plug whatever agent you want. And we have, so what the Kubernetes plugin provides is agents with infinite scale for some, whatever definition of infinite you want to use. Um, so it's only limited for the amount of resources you have in your cluster. It's all dynamic. Each agent runs in a pod. It has a unique thing to, that other plugins in Jenkins don't have, IGN provisioner plugins, which is allowing uh, groups of containers pods. And I'll show you demos uh, now. It also supports Jenkins pipeline. Who is using Jenkins pipeline today? All right. Jesus, this is, this is my dreams make, <laughs> make the reality. You, you, find, you find that's all boring, right, so far? So you can define your agents with the pipeline support. You can attach persistent workspaces and attach random whatever volumes you want to attach. And it's, uh, we auto configure it by, the, by default. So if you run your master in Kubernetes, uh, your uh, agent's configuration is already configured automatically to use the same namespace, the same credentials, and all that. 
So, from now on it's demo time, and you can ask me questions if, if you want. Okay. You can see that. Let's let's make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah. Okay. So I'm watching the pods that are running. So uh, this is an instance of Operation Center. If you use Blue Ocean, that I'm not going to ask because I'm sure everybody's using it already. Um, this is like the new UI for Jenkins that doesn't look like the 90s. Um, <laughs> so let's let's go back. Oh, not this one. Let's go back to the 90s for a second. I have two two masters already running. So this is Operation Center. I can go click here and create a new master. But the interesting bit that we have is uh, I can create what we call now a team. It's toward. I can, yeah, all the cool things. Yes. So what, what is this doing? In the back end, this is creating a stateful set creating the storage for the master. It's uh, creating the, making sure that there's one pod running. It's creating the service. It's creating the ingress rules. All that is, is handled by, by operation center behind the scenes. So this is still part of uh, CloudBiz Jenkins Enterprise. And if I go to the logs, not this one. So this is the, the one I just started. I can click on the logs, and I can see everything that has been happening. So the persistent volume claim, it's uh, getting bound. The pod is created. Uh, the, here there should be, yeah, it's creating the service, creating the ingress, using the host name, all that. And, uh, Basically, I'm, I'm, I can see from here what's happening to my master, how is it coming up. And this has all the cool things that Kubernetes provides for free, where, uh, I mean, if, if the pod dies, if the node dies, it's all uh, high availability. So is this thing that you're interacting now, is that running on the Kubernetes? Yeah, this is also running in the Kubernetes cluster. It's called CJOC. And uh, CloudBees Jenkins Operation Center. So if I show you everything that is running in this namespace, because I can also install multiple clusters of this in, the, in different namespaces. I have uh, one stateful set for the Operation Center, one for one master, and two for like three masters in total. This is the one that I just started, the team is Stuart. And you see that I get the service, I can get the ingress, uh, we also use roles and service accounts to limit the exposure of pr uh, privileges. So these are all the, uh, the ingresses that we have. Sorry, maybe at the back you don't see it. So at some point this is going to come up. But I'll show you in the other one. Well, it already came up. So, and from there on, you have uh, your own Jenkins master where you can install your plugins, uh, use it for your team. So it's uh, one-click one provisioning. Yes? Okay. For the demo, what are you using for storage? This is running a Kubernetes cluster on, EB, on Amazon, and it uses EBS. We try with EFS. Uh, with EFS, you have to have a very big uh, storage committed to have a decent performance. So let me switch to the other uh, server I have, the other master. Okay. Um, so these are automatically configured uh, to, to use the Kubernetes plugin provisioning. And I'll show you what the Kubernetes plugin can do. Uh, 
right. So this one. So I'm sure, and and now uh, um, the one I'm showing you now, it's a um, it's a Jenkins open source running on Google uh, Kubernetes engine. So this has the plugin uh, configured, so it's, it's, it will be the same in any of the masters. But I'll show you some examples. All right, so. If I create a new item and I call it KubeCon, and I create a pipeline, What I can do here is create my own pipeline. Uh, so, and define where I want this, uh, this build or this, uh, this job to run. So I can define a pod template. I can say name is KubeCon. And label is KubeCon2. And then I can say in the, in, in the node with the label kubecon, run something, sh, and let's run a hostname so you see the container hostname and sleep for a bit so we can figure this out. So I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna run it. And let me switch context to Google and Kubernetes. Yes, I'm there. And let's watch the pod start coming. So there's a node that is, uh, has been created, a pod that has been created as this is running. So I just, with a very simple uh, syntax, I just got an agent dynamically provisioned. So when the, once the job finishes, the agent is uh, discarded. So there it is. This is the host name. And if I wanted to run this multiple times, this is basically limited to the, to the resources you have in, in your Kubernetes cluster. There should be more uh, agents coming up, more pods. And while that's running, let me edit and uh, create the next pipe, uh, pod template pipeline. So what's happening here is that this is by default um, creating a container inside the pod that is basically the agent, the remoting agent for Jenkins. So this container by default is an Alpine image that just have a shell and Java and barely anything else. And I cannot do a lot of useful things with it. So what I can do is I can create my own container image that has all the tools I want. It may have the Docker client, it may have Java, JavaScript, whatever. But that's a pain in the ass because you have to like, basically mix things from different Docker images or I can just compose a pod with the tools I want. So you can see there's more uh, pods coming up and being created well, as the jobs keep running. So what I can say is, in this pod, you're gonna create some containers. And let's use a container template. And let's call it Maven, because I'm sure everybody loves Maven here, or hate it, one or the other. Uh, no. so, and the image is gonna be Maven Alpine. And two important things, because you know, like containers die, if you don't have a long running process, what you want to run, if this is not like a database or a web server or whatever that it's running, what I want to do is TTI enabled is true, and I wanna run a command that is cut. 
So this uh, keeps the container running all the time. And now I can go and say inside the, well, actually, I'll show you like MVN does not exist here. But inside the container, Maven, I can run MVN dash version. Uh, well, let's sleep for a bit. Oops. Okay. So I can run now. Uh, I should have changed the name so it's showing with a different name. Okay, I made a typo somewhere. Uh, okay, MVN not found. All right. Somebody's paying attention. I like it. I was going to make some mistakes on purpose to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> the other ones I don't, but you'll, you'll never know. Ah. Oh, yeah, what, what I was doing here. Anyway, uh, so it's MBM version or... Wait, what? what? Oh. Okay, you see that in the first call, MVN wasn't, this did not exist because this runs in the other container, the JNLP agent remoting. And again, I forgot to change the name. And now I have a different error. Container Maven does not exist. Oh yeah, because it's using the old, the old ones. So KubeCon Maven. And you've gone dash maven. Uh, no, you've gone dash maven. Yes. <laughs> so what this, this looks very simple, but it's really powerful because it allows you to reuse all the images that are already available in the hub so you don't have to go and create your own images. Okay, now we have the pods being created. And this is right. Sorry? Yes, both. I'll, I'll, I'll go there in a second. So, and this is running on a Maven container inside the pod that I just launched, okay? Now, uh, the gentleman here was asking if this uh, runs also in declarative pipeline that you probably all know, which is like a uh, easier, more concise version of pipelines. So, by default, um, you can use any groovy you want in a pipeline which is uh, really good because you can use any Groovy, and it's really bad because you can use any Groovy synthesis you want. So there's this idea of declarative pipelines where you can define the agent in a like, more concise, concise way. Uh, so I can say the same thing I was saying before. I can say uh, set some label, run, uh, create a template that has a Maven container in there, and then run some stages. So if I run this, uh, okay. And I'll show you the previous one. It's exactly the same. So you can have this, uh, this very simpler syntax if you want. Um, because, yeah, the, the problem with the groovy one is that uh, it gets complex pretty, pretty easily. All right. Now, um, another example. So how powerful it is to have uh, multiple, uh, to have con pods with multiple containers on them. So I'm gonna kick this and then I'll explain it as I go.
So this is a hard one to, let me just copy here and show it here. So this is a complex one. This is a Selenium uh, template that, and a pipeline that will run two tests in parallel. So it's running uh, two Maven containers, one for Firefox tests, one for Chrome tests, uh, against a Selenium hub and another container. That Selenium hub ha is, has connected two other containers, one with Chrome, uh, Selenium Chrome and one with Selenium Firefox. And so you have five containers plus the remoting. So it's a pod with six containers. So I'm reusing the, pod, the container images that were released by the Selenium project. Now, it's interesting. the interesting bits here is that because everything that runs in a pod runs in the same network namespace, and these images were designed to run in Docker Compose, you have to tweak different environment variables so the ports don't collide. So that's why all this customization, like you, you have to change the display port, you have to change the, uh, where to look for the uh, Selenium hub, and, but without touching the images, you can uh, define this pod that will run all this for you. And in parallel, I'm running a Firefox uh, test with Maven, just passing the Selenium browser Firefox, and I, have, I can run the Chrome browser tests. And then there's another uh, option in, in the Kubernetes plugin to get the container logs. So at the end, I'm just printing the logs from, from both uh, executions. So if I uh, go back. you will see I have, in parallel, the test running in Chrome and Firefox. And this should have shown um, the pods here launching. Let's run it again. Uh, and I want to go to the previous one. So there's something. So these steps are running against each, uh, from the Maven container, uh, testing against the Selenium hub, and then at the end I can also get the logs from the container. So this is whatever it was printed to the standard output of the, of the container. Sorry. Okay. Um, so the other, interesting thing that you can do is also deploy to Kubernetes from, uh, the, from Jenkins. So this is not related to, to the Kubernetes plugin that will spawn the agents, but you could also have both the agents and uh, the deploying to uh, Kubernetes cluster, that one or a different one. So let me show you an example. For some reason this was started. See? Yeah, I mean, it's you can get the output if you want to. Yeah. 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 The kubectl output here. Yeah, it's just showing you that the pods are starting, the pods are uh, finishing, and so on. Let me. Kill these pods first to make sure. By default, the yeah, it's not killed. Um, by default, there's uh, going to be a new uh, pod created uh, every time. But you can also set the time that they can stick around. So if you want a, a, a pod to be around for doing other things, you can you can do that. That's typically the confusing part for people where the, the, if the pod sticks around, Jenkins will schedule more work in that pod based on the labels. Sorry? Uh, they will get deleted at some point. It's just to make sure they're unclean. 
because it depends on on how often the, uh, the Jenkins goes through the provisioning phase. You may, have, you may find pods that stick around for longer. One thing we do is to use UUIDs for the labels. So every time every job runs in their own pod and you ensure that it only goes to that pod because the UUID is generated in every build and every job run. So I have this Croc Hunter application that you may know from so other people's demos. Um, sorry? Am I providing Docker? I'm running the containers inside pods, yeah. That was the question? Yes. So the pod has a You could mount things and make it available. So you can mount everything. You can mount uh, persistent volumes. You can mount files from the host if you want. You can do uh, all that, yeah. Yes? How's your, how's your demo interacting with the Docker daemon? It's just using Kubernetes API. It's not talking to the Docker daemon at all. Let me just launch one thing, because this may take a little bit to come up. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm launching this, uh, this execution, and you have a question here? Yeah, maybe you'll talk about it later on, but uh, the next step of this thing is building containers inside the pod. Because building the artifacts is a slightly different thing than building the containers inside the pod. So Okay, so do, your question is, how do I get this out of the pod into somewhere else? No, it's no. more, I want to use my pod to build a Docker image. That's part of my okay, you want to use your pod to build a Docker image. So you can do it the same way as you would do uh, with Kubernetes. You would mount the Docker socket. Uh, actually, I think this example does it. Uh, okay. Open. So this example, it's building a Go application, it's packaging in a Docker container, and then it's pushing the container, the image, to the Google container registry, and, and then it's deploying it with Kubernetes. So this is a more complex pipeline. So I have, again, several containers running. Um, actually, I don't think this is the branch. Oops. Yeah, okay. Um, so I have the agent container, I have the JNLP container here. I have a Docker container, which is the Docker client only. With the Google Cloud SDK, I just need this to push to, to, to the Google registry. I have the Golang image to build my Golang application. And then I have the kubectl image to run kubectl commands. So I don't have to create one image with all this. I just need to create, um, to plug them all together. And what I'm doing is mounting the Docker socket into the container, into the pod, right? So this has the, the benefit that you can use Docker commands. It has the problem that you can use Docker commands. So it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Yeah. Yes? One more on that aspect. Now, once you start pushing these things and it goes crazy and it's awesome, how do you deal with all the garbage? If you use the Docker socket, you are on your own, basically. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, not if you use the Docker socket. The plugin will interact with the Kubernetes API, and that's it. So, the, I mean, it, we can talk later uh, after the talk if you want to talk about how to build Docker images in a Kubernetes cluster. It's going to be a long talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just finish this example. Um, so, interesting bits here. I'm building the Go application here. So, inside the container Go Lang, I'm running Make. Nothing fancy there, but I'm, you see I'm reusing the containers. I'm not creating my own images. 
Then in the container Docker that has the Docker CLI installed, I'm running the Docker build. And then the G Cloud Docker push. So this is creating the container, the image, and pushing it to the Google registry. And in the container kubectl, what I'm saying is, hey, just uh, I have some YAML definitions in GitHub. Just uh, execute them and, and install this uh, application that uh, does this thing, whatever it is. So if this run fine, which I don't think it did, waiting for next available executor. Hey, Carlos? Yes. Do you have the script anywhere, like on GitHub or anything? Where we can yes, yes. Okay. That's, and that's on the slides, too, I think. Yeah. I'm in the right place. Of course, the demos never work. Uh, OK, so this is waiting. Oh, there it is. It's just patience. What's lacking? So this is going to go through that. And you know that you can also have approval steps. So what I'm doing here, if type permits, uh, there is uh, here. Is where it is. So I'm asking, do you, are you approving? Do you want to approve this deployment? And this pipeline is going to wait for one hour there, sitting and waiting for me to click. And unfortunately, it took a little bit longer to start. So in this pipeline, also what I'm doing, if if I it has a GitHub hook, so I can commit changes and gets trigger updates with kubectl. And if I get get this and croc hunter all. So there's nothing running here yet. So still going through the compiler test. So I think this is going to make me run out of time. But if you have questions now, yes. If? Well, if, 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 you're, if any of the containers die in a pod, it's what will happen with any Kubernetes pod. It's just the container, uh, the pod uh, ends. It will tell you exited or error or something. Uh, you'll get messages in the log. So yeah, one thing we uh, we do is there's a cap that you can set. So this does not spinning things over and over uh, again. Let's see. OK, so this is deployed. And I got my app built with a container. And, and I'm missing the part where I was pushing things to GitHub. But uh, you, get, you get the idea. This is building the image. And uh, OK. And time's up. All right. Well, you can, we can talk later. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh.